Well, welcome back to the Big Board. I thought we'd have a check-in on Forgotten Legions, the drive on Damascus, and I showed you some prep uh, and a little bit of setting up earlier on. I did set up a live play of the first turn, but unfortunately, none of that stuck or took, as the case may be. So we're deep into and ready to do combat for turn four now, and uh, it um, it's an interesting situation. The the pace is a little different from uh, other games on the same topic, so it feels slower, <clears throat> but you're probably advancing just as far, but there's no sort of opportunity to do any sort of exploit movement or no secondary moves for uh, motorized mechanized units and that sort of nature. It's very much a move and fight, move and fight, move and fight type of game with your artillery adding in a little value, some air, <clears throat> you know, air chits adding in some value when they arrive. I need to check actually to make sure that I haven't missed the opportunity to use those guys yet. I think they come later. And in fact, that's the, that's where a few of the nuances are and differences are, is that, you know, for instance, there's no air for the Commonwealth or, or for the the, free, uh, the French, the Axis uh, uh, either uh, at the beginning of the game. It only comes on a little bit later. The naval rules are little soft. I mean, you're not, not really going to do a whole lot with them. You're going to maybe interdict, uh, interdict a road here or there, or maybe support a combat somewhere, as the case may be. Uh, but uh, you are stuck with the same dilemma, though. You have three avenues of approach. You have to choose which one you're going to take. And it feels like there are plenty of access units to try and cover most of the approaches. Uh, but you're always on the defensive. You're never really going to be able to, in the early part of the game, in any case, you know, put any sort of uh, aggressive counterattacks up because, you know, the, these units are all locked down until this turn, in fact. So they, they can't participate in combat. Uh, and you've got these other garrison units that need to be released one per turn, as the case may be. And in fact, this turn, because... Uh, Oh, yeah, it's still just one per turn. So, so there it is. I mean, it's fun. It's fun. It plays fast. You can you can literally play a turn if you know what you want to do. You can play a turn in probably a full turn for both sides in 15 minutes. So it, it's going to play pretty well, and it's pretty pretty easy to set up. The only the only incong incongruous thing for me is that you know uh, for for the axis units, uh, all the face up units. The locations are where they actually go for this scenario. But for the Commonwealth, because some of these forces were used in other battles, on the back side, you're going to have a setup hex for these guys and a turn of arrival for them, even though you'll be using, you'll be using them here. And, and on this side here, you'll see a reinforcement notation. That's for, I guess, for the Battle of Karen. So... Um, Important to keep in mind not to mix up which which side of the counter you're looking at when you're you're scrounging around for reinforcements, which is why the handy dandy setup charts come uh, are so useful and come in handy. Uh, so they uh, they have been very helpful in making sure that you don't miss anything. Although I'm not a huge fan of laying everything out on the setup chart and then moving it to the board, I, I just go through the counters, find what I need, put them on the board. And just double check them against the against the setup charts. But there you go. So it's it's pretty interesting. And com combat is really pretty straightforward uh, exercise. There are very few DRMs that are going to be applied to any given combat. And this we've got a few situations here and there where <clears throat> a DRM may be applied. Obviously, terrain uh, supply is one. Uh, river, you know, the rivers and whatnot are others, but then you may uh, also, uh, obviously, air would be uh, beneficial as well. I think I talked about these earlier on, uh, so I don't want to get into that uh, per se. So I just thought I'd check in with you. We're at uh, midway through turn four, and we'll see how the turn progresses. We've got 
possibly a combat going on over here we're not sure yet definitely a combat here and we're going to try and crack this river line here by attacking this single hex here just from this location with artillery support and we're going to do a soak off attack on this guy here and and we'll probably punch that guy out of that spot there we've got some good odds on him right there uh, zoom in a little bit for you so you can see what's going on and then there's uh these garrison units that need to be taken care of these Druze units are really annoying You've got to keep some stuff here on the flank, otherwise, uh, if if the axes do release one of them, versus releasing units up in the back uh, up in the backfield to reinforce the full defenses, they can come in and cut supply and slow everything down. So you've you've got to you've got to take care of them, which means you've got to divert some forces one way or another. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Hope you guys are enjoying your day.